Let me tell you, the border policies of President Biden are a disaster. We've had the highest number of legal crossings last month in the history of the country. It is now time to bring about change. President Biden and all of you believe in open borders, don't you? Don't you? I mean, I ask really basic questions. There are, I don't mean any disrespect. I appreciate you being here. And, and I know you all love our country as we all do. But I believe in straight answers. I like straight answers and breakfast food. And there are only one, two possibilities here. Either President Biden and his team believe in open borders or the people that the president has put in charge of the immigration policy of this country are not qualified to manage a food truck. We need less illegal immigration. Count me in the camp of making sure that children are, are not abused and employers who abuse them, they should go to jail. Uh, how do you say your name, Mr. Morant? Morant, Senator. Okay, well, I want to help you get the bad guys. You can't fix a problem until you understand the nature of it. Mr. Salazar, is it your belief that 312% increase in unaccompanied minors since 2020 is all about the economics of the world and not about Biden policy regarding illegal immigration? Sir, I think economics is just but one factor uh, of the root causes that are driving. Uh, uh, you don't think the policies the Biden administration have implemented is a direct correlation to increase in illegal immigration at levels we've never seen before? Sir, I think that the Biden administration has led the largest expansion of legal powers. Do you think you're doing it well? Do you think the Biden administration's got the right policy when it comes to illegal immigration? With all humility, sir, I think we're doing, we're, we've got more that needs to be done. We no, I mean, the question is, is it working? Do you believe the policies being implemented by the Biden administration are working when it comes to deterring illegal immigration and controlling our borders? Sir, I think more needs to be done frankly. Okay. Let me tell you what that more is. Cut off the pull factors. Uh, if you're from Mexico, can we send you home as an unaccompanied minor or Canada? The law, law of the United States says if we get an unaccompanied minor from Mexico and Canada, we can send them back to their country. Is that correct, Mr. Salazar? Sir, I... I'm not aware of what the law says. Well, you need to be aware of the law because <laughs> I think I've just exposed the problem here. Let me tell you, the law is that if you're from Canada and Mexico and you show up as an unaccompanied minor, we can literally send you home unless there's some evidence of trafficking. The reason it's gone up 312% is if you're from a non-contiguous nation other than Mexico or Canada, we have to keep you. Word is out all over the world that if you get here as an unaccompanied minor and you're not from Mexico and Canada, the United States, you'll be here forever. That's why there's 300 and something percent increase. I'd like to change that law. I'd like to harmonize the law no matter where you come from as an unaccompanied minor. We can send you back to the country of origin because if we don't, we're going to have more human trafficking. We're going to have more sorrow for, for children and we're eventually going to get some 17-year-old in this country who kills a bunch of us. So... This is the root problem. You don't know what's going on. You can't fix it. Let me tell you, the border policies of President Biden are a disaster. We've had the highest number of legal crossings last month in the history of the country. It is now time to bring about change. We need to change our law to stem the tide of unaccompanied minors. It's a terrible situation. It will never change until the law changes. Asylum claims are not economic hardship based. The asylum system is broken. The parole system is broken. The incentives for unaccompanied minors need to change. We need to deter people from dropping their children off at our border because it's hazardous for them and there's a breaking point for the American people. So my advice, Mr. Chairman, is to let's work together to change the law, to slow down the illegal flow work together down the road to fix a broken immigration system. But we have a war raging against our friends in Israel. The map of Europe is being written, be written, 
rewritten by force of arms, everybody in the policy world is screaming at us that the likelihood of a terrorist getting in to our country through a broken border is exceedingly high. The number of people on the terrorist watch list grows by the day. So I would like to make sure unaccompanied children are not exploited when they get here. That is a noble effort. But I would like to deter the world from dropping kids off at our border. It's not good for them. It's not good for us. And the policy changes that are going to be required uh, have to be done before we can expect a different outcome. If you keep doing what we're doing and expect something different, you will be disappointed. I am now ready to make policy changes to stop what I consider the biggest national security threat to America, a broken border. Thank you, Senator Graham. Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, since President Biden's been president, uh, how many non-American citizens have come into our country illegally or on the basis of a claim of asylum? Thank you, Senator. Um, HSI as an investigative agency is... Uh, how, how, do you know the number? No, Senator. You're a senior member of Homeland Security, are you not? That's correct. Does anybody know the number? None of you know the number. Try 8 million. Now, of that 8 million, how many were children, Mr. Morant? I don't have that number. Sorry. You don't know. Does anybody know? None of you know. Isn't that special? Let's assume half. Okay. Eight million is four Nebraskas. Right? Four new states. Let's assume, I don't think it's as high, half of them are children. How many of the how many of those eight million people are still here? Do any of you know? Okay. Um, how many how many of those eight million are claiming asylum? You don't know? How many of them claim asylum and don't show up for their hearing? Nobody knows? How many of them claim asylum, don't show up for the hearing, and President Biden has deported them? You don't know? How, how many of them have claimed asylum, shown up for their asylum hearing, and been denied asylum, and been deported? You don't know. How many of them were from Mexico? You don't know. How about 30%? That means 70% were not, right? Surely you know the answer to that. 30% minus 100% is 70%. Am I right? Okay. It, let's, uh, 30 percent came from Mexico. Why don't you implement a safe third country policy that says under asylum, under our asylum rules, you have to seek asylum in the first safe country. So if you come, say, from Venezuela or, or Nicaragua or, 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 or another Central American com country, you have to seek asylum in, your, in the first safe country. Why don't you do that? And then that would eliminate 70% of the 8 million. That's 5.6 million. Why don't you do that, Mr. Morant? Is that a question, sir? Yes. That's All beyond, I've been asking are questions. That's beyond the purview of HSI. Oh, okay. How about you, Mr. Salazar? You're a former advisor to the vice president. How come we don't do a safe third country agreement? Sir, we're working with our partners in the region. 21 countries signed on to the Los Angeles Declaration. Have you done a safe third country agreement? You've had, what have you been at it, two years? 
what we are doing is working with them to expand legal pathways. Why doesn't President Biden get up in the morning tomorrow and say, we're changing the asylum process and we're doing what most other countries do, safe third country policy. You have to seek asylum. We support asylum. We have to seek asylum in the first safe country. That would eliminate 5.6 million people. Boom. Done. Coming into our country illegally. Wouldn't it? Sir, I just want to point out Washington. Wouldn't it? It, it would, sir, but there are activities okay. underway. Um, let me ask you this, because I'm going to run out of time. President Biden and all of you believe in open borders, don't you? Don't you? I mean, I ask really basic questions. There are, I don't mean any disrespect. I appreciate you being here. And, and I know you all love our country as we all do. But I believe in straight answers. I like straight answers and breakfast food. And there are only two possibilities here. Either President Biden and his team believe in open borders or the people that the president has put in charge of the immigration policy of this country are not qualified to manage a food truck. And nobody's that incompetent. You, you folks believe in open borders, don't you? Sir, I think we believe in secure borders. You believe in open You don't even know how... Well, I'm going to take 30 more seconds. You don't even know how many people have come in illegally since President Biden has been president? You're a former senior advisor to the vice president of the United States, Mr. Salazar. And you can't even give me a number? No, sir. That's like going to an oncologist and asking him, what's cancer? And he says, I don't know. Give me a break. Senator Welch. Uh, thank you. I thank the witnesses. Uh, 